Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today we're going to try to get more power out of this Class D amplifier. I tried before with the GW Instec. I was limited at about just over, you know, 31 half volts, uh, 3 amps on each side. It was easy to do, and I wasn't even sure I can get that much power out without distortion. But we were. It, and when we looked at the spec, it showed the spec showed that we should. And so far it looks good. Now I've got these Kai Wheats. They're ready to, I think I can go 32 volts on those, pretty close to 32, at 10 amps. So we won't be limited on the current. So, yeah, I want to just try it. So let's just do it. I've, so in this video, I'll show you how I've connected these two to be like a tracking generator. I have to track with both hands. <laughs> so it's a visual feedback system. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, we'll do it, and we'll see how much more power we can get out of this, and if we can still do it without distortion. Th that'd be a great sign, because I think what I'm uh, kind of shooting for, as far as that spec and everything, I want to be around the 35 volt, plus minus 35 volt range, I believe. We use the key feed for THD to see where the THD takes a jump. And also, I've got the Pico hooked up, and we'll see how well the Pico does um, with the Keithley and... The mix sig, okay? And uh, I was using the GW on another signal, but we're not looking at that. But all right, so let's just make this quick. Let's just do it. Okay, a quick uh, go around about the setup. The input power is right here, plus minus return. It's DC power, so it goes through the bridge rectifiers just like the AC would. It diodes direct the correct sides of the capacitors. We're only going to put a signal in to this channel the red wire here. The white wire is for this channel. So this is the input signal and the black is the return. So we have our AC input, our signal input, the red light comes on when power comes up and the fans kick on and, and these fans work great. They keep the thing cool. Uh, the power for the fans are right here. The power for this fans here. Power for this fans here. The output chokes for this channel right there and the output chokes for this channel right here. So again, there's a there's an 8954 underneath here, and there's an 8954 underneath here. Now this guy, we're gonna power up and get as max power we can, and I'll take some thermal pictures, and the resistor for that output is right there. I put the blue tape on it so in my thermal camera, the uh, reflectivity of the aluminum doesn't change uh, for the tape at least so I can focus on that and then this resistor will not get hot because we're not going to be putting out we're not going to be amplifying any signal here okay so on the output I've got differential probe for the Pico Th these are the Pico probes really like those probes and these are the probes for the Pentec DP25 differential probe that goes to the Mixig right now okay so let me just zoom up and show you that so here's the amplifier for the current probe right up here on the power supply. And this is a Pintec differential probe, okay? And over here we have the Pico differential probe and the Pico scope. I only have one probe in there right now. I'm just kind of playing around with the Pico for now. So and up here we have our two Kiwitz power supplies. This I'm using as a plus supply, and that I'm using as a minus supply. So I got plus output, then I've got this uh, return side tied to the plus down on the next power supply. So it's like stacking two batteries on top of each other, right? That one down there is the most negative terminal. And then the in between is the is used as the ground, and that's this green wire, and then the red. Okay, so these I can go up a little over 30 volts. I think 31 volts probably and they'll go up to 10 amps each. So they'll put out more power than this guy. So we can see how much power we can get. Then over this way, then right down over there, we have the Keithley THD meter. Well, it's a multimeter with THD function. So I'll be watching that for the THD. Okay, so the idea will be that I'll increase amplitude to this until I see, you know, the waveforms start getting distorted, the typical clipping that we see, or the THD meter over there starts to increase. Okay, and hopefully 
Well, with Kiwits, we'll not be limited with current this time. We might, we'll probably be limited with voltage though. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the the voltage here, and I'm going to bring them up kind of evenly as much as I can. My tracking power supply. Okay, I'm bringing them both up to 32 volts. So I was able to go all the way to 32. I got the current maxed out. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. So. All right, so here we go. We're gonna increase that amplitude. And by the way, all through this range right now, 19 volts on the output, I'm at 0.326% distortion on the THD. And over on the Pico, I'm at 0.6, about 0.6, kind of bounced around. But now, one thing I got to point out is on the key field, I've got it going to seven harmonics. I think on the Pico scope, it's going out further. That's why the THD is higher. Okay, we should be getting close to max. Yeah, see the top of that waveform? Okay. Right there, we're 3.5% distortion. Right there, we're 0.345. So, so it's 0.35 on the key fleet, and guess what? Uh, so it's 3.55 on the key fleet. Guess what? It's 3.65 on the Pico. So that's great to get that kind of correlation. Okay, I'm going to go over to another digit, see if I can go up a little bit higher. Okay, right about there. I think that's the border. Okay, I'm right at 40 volts. I'm right at 40 volts on the output. And I'm at 0.334% distortion. So we haven't started to climb it up in distortion. The Pico's 0.5. It's kind of bounced around just like the Keithy. The Keithy's a little more steady. 3, 3, about 0.33. And the Pico is about 0.47 to 0.58. So there we are. Uh, that is 200 watts output. All right, guys, this is a thermal picture. Uh, right now with rec fire in there, when I moved the camera so it was only could only see the amplifier part, it was 50 degrees C on top of the heat sink. And it's 78.5 on the diode the rectifier we're only using two diodes in there so they're getting a little hot but the rest of the things are cooler so the white is the hottest thing on the see the graph here white's the hottest and red down to the colors so we're barely starting to get white up here but yeah it was 50 degrees there 22 28 28 to center so yeah now I was afraid to run it too long because I didn't want to cool things down with the fan so I decided not to run my muffin fan that I had on it. I just said the heat sink get really hot and look how hot it got. Hard to tell there, 139C. That was as it was heating up, 165C. And right here is 170C. <laughs> Alright guys, so what do you think of that? 40 volts RMS, that's 200 watts. That's that's impressive, that's great. That's about where I want to be so I think I think we're looking good. That was 32 volts, plus minus 32, plus minus 35 might give us a little bit more range. I think I might shoot for that. Uh, what do you guys think? Is that the right voltage? You know, I go higher in voltage, closer to 40, get that even more power, but then we're going, we're definitely going to get into that 10% distortion at that level. So I don't know if I'm interested in that. So what do you guys say? Hey, by the way, thanks to Patreons, two thumbs up. Appreciate you guys. Um, now, Again, we ran into a lab power supply limitation. I got the current on these two Kiwits, but not the voltage. Um, might sound crazy, but four of these guys. If I put two in series and, you know, stuck the two in series on plus, two in series on minus, tied them together. But that'd be crazy. I'd have four knobs I'd have to turn. But really, this big old... HP, this is 60 volts at 50 amps. I need two big guys like that. So, or a big tracking generator. You know, most tracking power supplies just, it's such a common value to have 30 volts. 
and this one's three amps. This is the first one I got. It was only 20 volts, and it was uh, two and a half amps. So, I mean, pretty low power, and they're expensive. Those are used, and they were still expensive. I mean, compared to these, those guys are expensive, even used. So, yeah, power supplies, lab power supplies are just expensive. All right. Well, hey, anyway, it looks like we're on the right track. Uh, 200 watts. That puts me right in that spec value. I think that's a 32 volts plus minus 32. If I go plus minus 35, I think I'm still in the spec where the power's pretty clean. So I feel like I can trust the spec. I feel like everything's working well. So what do you guys think? Uh, using a transformer, I think I'd need, I'd really need, if I want 200 per side at the same time, need 400 watts. And if these guys are at 90% efficient, which they're probably a little bit better at that high power, but even at 90, then I need an extra 10%. So 500 VA would give me some headroom. Now, the thing is, though, is we're not going to be running that power like that level. You know, it's just people aren't, at least in a home sitting, you're just not, that's just too loud. You'd probably blow up your speakers. So, but it does give you that dynamic range, knowing you can hit 200 watts. That's great. So what if we only had half that, 250 VA? Well, we're limiting our, you know, max constant power to about 125 watts per channel which is still not bad right not bad at all but really we're again that's constant power if we're operating normal music with normal signals then we're not going to be operating there either so i'm kind of leaning to something in between like say a three somewhere around 320 i think 320s uh or 360s a va a standard va by the company i'm thinking about Avil Lindbergh, yeah, these guys. <laughs> I think these guys make a 320 or 360, something in between. Even a 250, I think, would sound great. This guy is 160, 160 VA. So one twice that size, 320. Uh, the one I put in that class A, uh, th what turned out to be a 30 watt amplifier, that was a 250 VA. So I don't know. I got, I'm going to think about it. what you guys think. Let me know. Thanks for watching. Hey, we'll see you next time.